Um, okay, thank you very much, Sabrina. Okay, we're calling the meeting to order. Uh, this is a meeting of the November 1st Arts Commission meeting for the city of Norwalk. I'm Mark Allen, the chairman. I'm gonna call the uh, attendance, uh, Brian Casper. Brian Casper, voting member, present. Thank you, sir. Uh, Elizabeth Tardiff. Elizabeth Tardiff, voting member, present. Thank you so much. Ava Jacobs. Ava Jacobs, voting member, present. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Rust. Steve Rust, voting member, present. Thank you so much. Melissa Matuska. Melissa Matuska, voting member, present. And that's all I see. Sabrina, is there anybody else hiding that I don't see? Nope, that's it. Okay, so we have a quorum. Uh, we may get a couple more members uh, straggling in, but we have enough to begin. Um, so um, do we have anybody uh, for public participation? Um, we don't, but our first agenda items are um, the others you see on the phone. Um, so they'll be speaking to those items right after you guys approve the minutes. Okay, very good. And uh, in that case, uh, moving along, um, do we have a, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes of the last meeting and do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, is there a second on that motion? Brian Casper, second. I second. Oh, well, Steve, you can have it. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, so we'll just call a quick roll call on the vote. Um, starting with myself, Mark Allen, voting aye. Uh, turn it over to Brian Casper. Brian Casper, I approve the minutes of last meeting. Thank you so much. And Elizabeth Tardiff. Voting aye to approve the minutes. Thank you so much. Ava Jacobs. Aye. Uh, Stephen Rust, uh, I don't think you were present at the last meeting, uh, correct? Or were you? That's correct. No, you are correct. Okay, so you'll have to abstain. Um, Melissa, were you, were you present at the last meeting? I'm sorry to ask. I was. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you vote on that? I. Okay, very good. Um, and the chair just wants to recognize Nori Gruden, who just uh, popped in, a voting member. Are you here, Nori Gruden? Yes, I. Very good. And uh, right now we're in the middle of voting on the minutes. Um, do, did you have a chance to review the last minutes and do you uh, vote to approve as noted in your email? Uh, yes, I will approve. Okay, so the eyes carry the minutes are uh, passed. And um, we can move on to the uh, uh, first. Uh, Sabrina, do you have the agenda? Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Um, Let's talk. Well, so I think that technically speaking, the uh, home field traffic wasn't new business. Uh, it was really old business, but um, we can move on to that. Um, turn it over to the folks from home field. Are we on? Yes. I think so, yeah. First of all, hello, Mark Allen. It's Billy Blanks Jr. with the beard. Oh, I didn't recognize you, Billy. How are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm doing good. <laughs> Um, so we, uh, we had, uh, we had met last month and, uh, to talk about the home field traffic, uh, box. Um, and we had, uh, there were con some concerns, uh, from members of the commission and we had sent it back to you guys. And we wanted to, uh, there were concerns over the branding. Uh, we typically don't do branding within, uh, public art. So we wanted that to address that with you guys. Um, did you guys uh, want to speak about the uh, the project in general? Yeah, and I've got our um, our artist is on too as well, Chris. If he wants to kind of touch on his piece, um, but we're we're perfectly you know comfortable going forward without the the home field logo on the design. Um, if you guys are okay with the design being how it was, can I ask about it though? Because I'm just actually learning about the fact that um, that we can't have it on there. So, uh, do, do you guys know about Homefield? What Homefield does, and know that the state of Connecticut and Lamont have all invested in Homefield because it's for families with special abilities. Yeah, yeah, we're all we're all on board with Homefield, and it's it's not about that particular. Was the wheelchair the thing? 
No, it's just about the company brand is specifically oh. where, you know, we don't use the public art for uh, commercial uh, gotcha. you know, advertising. So that's, that was the only concern there. Um, but of course, but we love Homefield and we're all on board with you guys and uh, we definitely want to support you. Um, oh, yeah. Can you tell us about the design in general? Yeah, if uh, is Chris it's on. Yeah, I'm on. I'm like hustling awesome. into my apartment right now. Perfect. Man. Um, I got out of work late, so hey guys, I'm Chris Sinato, and uh, I'm on my iPhone right now. Not a voting member, and uh, excited to be here. Um, but yeah, so I mocked up a piece for these guys, um, and they uh, basically to tell you guys what I do. I do collage artwork, and um primarily it's collage artwork with uh you know for lack of a better word like doodles over top and uh you know <clears throat> since this project's gonna be outdoors long term i skipped the collage aspect of it um and just led with the with the sort of random markings that i like to to create and sort of the meaning behind it really is uh um you know trying to it's a sort of a metaphor for life and sort of like how you can do something kind of chaotic and random and it can come together in a in a beautiful way and you know make a nice composition so that's kind of what fuels the work that i do and um and yeah you know if you guys have any questions about it i'm happy to happy to chat hey colby is there any way that you can show us a larger rendering of that on your computer it's not i can send it yeah let me um i'll send yeah if i can get it on my right now i'm on my phone because like i said i was driving in from from work but if, um cool, if if I can, computer, I can, screen share if you can email it to me i can just share it perfect oh, perfect that's to uh sabrina correct yep okay that's fine then i'll go back in there while they're, while they're sending it over, Chris, can you speak to, um, uh, I guess, just the, you know, the overall creation of, of the doodles and the mark making? Is there other specific references that you, or is it more just off the cuff? I mean, can you, can you talk about it just a little bit while they're doing that? Yeah, it's a little bit like off the cuff. I, so the, the rendering I gave them is um, a little bit of a uh, kind of a go-to design that I, I do. I can show you guys quickly while they're pulling that up. Let me see how I flip this around. I just collaborated with um, Half Full Brewery. So, you know, I did a collaboration with them where, uh, you know, basically, and they, they're having me redesign their whole lineup of cans, which... Um, it's pretty exciting. I'm, you know, it's been great working with them. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, I've kind of got a collection of these here. Um, and then to show you some originals, let's see. I guess maybe it actually worked out decent that I'm on my phone. Um, so you can see, I, I do a lot of work over top of vintage New York Times newspapers. So this, these here, you know, this series here is all on 1929, which is kind of interesting because it's like right before um you know the crash of uh of you know the, the great depression there and uh some of the articles were just fascinating um let's see i've also done some you know random stuff with like paired with watercolor messing around with that and you know i've got stacks and stacks and stacks of these which i'm trying to figure out what to do with them <laughs> but um you know it's really just kind of a lot of fun and to be honest they um primarily just you know if i have a stressful day at work i come home and uh how do i flip this thing back here here we go uh if i'm having a stressful day at work i you know come home and, and kind of sketch a couple out and if they're good i keep them and if not i still keep them but i put them off to the side and yeah so there you go i i really like the design i i think that we're really first of all i'm really happy that you came chris because um, you know, this program uh, for traffic boxes, um, what you had, I would say that what we're in the process now is really just defining our processes for the city, right, for creating public art. And I would say 
this is not by design, but the way it's worked historically in the past, we've had artists have, or, or, or a project curator has come to us with a, with a design in mind. And there's usually like an artist will come and present to the commission. Um, but this had come to us through, um, through the city of Norwalk and had come from Homefield. It was unclear to us if there was even an artist attached to this project. And that was our really, that was one of our concerns. There's been, on a side note, we've, we've had some people have, uh, you know, had tried to move towards doing like vinyl wrapping of boxes, for instance. And that's something that we as a commission had decided, no, um, we really want to go for originally painted, you know, boxes because it creates opportunities for artists. It also, you know, for a variety of reasons, that's the, what, the, you know, we're, that's the direction we're going. So when this had come to us from Homefield, it was unclear if there was an artist involved, if this was simply a graphic art design, and we didn't know if it was going to be a, a painted rendering or, you know, so thank you for clear, clarifying that. Um, sure, yeah, it'll definitely be painted. I think as far as medium goes, I was planning on using um, some spray paint, which I know we're getting a little bit late into the, like it's just a little cold out i'm a little concerned about that uh you know so it's definitely possible but i would prefer to get going sooner than later just so that i'm not out there freezing my fingertips off but um you know whatever works and i, I will say i you know now that and now meeting you and seeing your work and i'm definitely seeing your sense of style mm -hmm. and uh, i like it i uh, we i think we were liked the design and I want to, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but you know, it's colorful, uh, it's eye catching. I really like it. And now that I know that there's an artist behind it, you know, I feel much more comfortable. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I've been, I've been really trying to leave my mark, you know, kind of throughout this area. I've, I've actually, I've got a piece in the, uh, that Isaac park or Isaac, kind of that driveway that, um, is over near, um, it's in Norwalk. Uh, yeah, that's where I am now. Oh, yeah, there you go. So the Beatles one. I did the Beatles one. Oh, you did? Oh, that's one yeah. of the ones. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, that's really great to know. It's because i tell you what, the Traffic Box program uh, is also about the artist. You know, mm -hmm. It's a matter of we're trying to create opportunities for, for, for artists. And all of our public art, you know, Brian Casper is very much involved with it. All of our members are really involved with that. So... You know, it's as a matter of uh, networking with the artists and featuring the artists as much as it is the painting. So Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, you know, that sounds pretty exciting. And uh, kudos to Homefield for connecting with you. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. So anybody, anybody else in the commission have any uh, questions for Chris or any concerns or any, uh, any thoughts? I don't have anything. I I like it. I think it looks great. Okay. Um, I do notice that the logo is still on here. Yeah, this is the, yeah. the original rendering. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. They have agreed to, to take the logo off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yesterday, uh, you know, the, the team reached out to me and they were like, hey, you know, is there any concern? And I was like, no, no, it won't be a problem. But I, I didn't realize, that, you know, I, I see now that you guys explained the beginning, I that totally makes sense. And, uh, you know, if you guys need a, an updated rendering, I'm happy to do it. It'll take a few seconds. Um, but if not, you know, I, I'm on board to, you know, sort of give you my word that it won't be there. It makes yeah, my life yeah. a lot easier, too. I don't have to paint a logo perfectly. You know, so. I think I think on some <laughs> on some other boxes, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, or anyone for that matter, um, I know some boxes that SPAG has done, you know, there's a, there's a little little thing on the bottom that says, you know, who was done by and sort of like in conjunction with SPAG. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it sort of being like, whatever, supported by home field or something like that. It's, yeah. um, my, my thing was the logo and it's just basically turning into an advertisement. Um, it's a slippery slope. Uh, That's the problem. You know, we, you know, we don't want to see a Nike, a Nike swoosh on a, on a box, you know? Yeah. Are oh, you so I did a project? I, I did a project. I was hired by Clear and I did a project for them with the uh, um, the Cow Parade in Manhattan last summer. And 
it was a similar thing where like it's a fundraiser and they were the corporate sponsor and they wanted their logo and I ended up putting the logo in there a very subtle way kind of similarly to how I did it but what I also did was I adhered a QR code on the thing and that uh, they their marketing team was thought that was a good creative workaround to sort of like you know work it into the art but it wasn't like a blatant billboard and really only someone that was curious would scan like you know so that's just an idea i'm throwing out there i think that's a really cool idea actually you know i one of the things that i say is that when i travel around the world and i see public art i'm always admiring when they put up a plaque and have a qr code and so really it's it, it, it's more you know it's it, it denotes care and, and concern for the artist as well as for the the art yeah, and it's also a little window, you know, it's a little portal where it, it does, it causes the, the passerby to maybe stop for a second, pull out their phone and, you know, see see where that little QR code takes them. So, you know, it could be a video, it could be, you know, there's a million different things you can do with it. So, <laughs> you know, just, just a way to give the, the home field guys a little credit for their sponsorship and their, you know, support of, of the city art. Right on. Um, so that said, um, uh, do, is there anybody who wants to make a motion on this um, project? I'd like to motion to approve the traffic box with the amended removal of the logo. Okay. I would second that motion. Very good. I, and I, I agree with you guys. I think that's the way to go. I'm going to vote aye on this. Um, myself, Mark Allen, and I'm going to turn it over to Brian for a vote. Uh, Brian Casper, I vote aye. Elizabeth Tardif, please. I vote aye. Uh, Ava Jacobs. Aye. Uh, Stephen Rust. Aye. Uh, Nori Gruden. Aye. And uh, Melissa Matuska. says connecting to audio. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure she'll come back and join us in a second. Um, uh, either way, the eyes do, will carry. And uh, thank you so much, you guys, for coming in and meeting with us. That, that means a lot. And um, will you let us know um, by email uh, what the uh, your schedule is going to be as far as uh, um, you know getting this done? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, is that the audio, the audio one? Yeah, the audio. Is okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, is Sabrina the best one to reach out to via email? Yes, generally. Okay. You can reach out to me, and then I can send everybody um, all the information that they need. Cool. Thank you yeah. guys so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Good to see so you. Then Thank my you. next steps, I'm coordinating with who to make sure or to, you know, when it begins. So I'll get that through through Colby or Sabrina. Yeah, too. yeah. I'll reach out to you, Chris, and I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. If you, can let, if you can let us know in advance, because we'd love, you know, getting photos of, of it in process and afterwards and all that stuff. If you take some photos or any kind of video content you can submit to us, we'd love to show that on our uh, Arts Commission social media. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I run the uh, social media for Homefield, so I'll be there whenever he's doing the project. I'll get all the behind the scenes and all that for you guys as well. Great. So, Billy, how did you get involved? Was uh, I'm, I'm actually the president of Homefield and do all of the um, content. They actually found me doing uh, an event for Ableist uh, for Families with Special Abilities and asked me to come on. Uh, and so uh, we've been on for about a year now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, building the company. So it's really exciting. One of the, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, good seeing you. Thank you. Congratulations. You too. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Buddy. Uh, Sabrina, can we go back to the uh, to the uh, agenda? Okay, thank you so much. Um, so Brian, uh, let's kick it over yeah. to you for the Monroe Street uh, Rail Bridge. Did anyone else see Dan White pop up on this call? Who? Yes, yes. He's a famous magician. I did not see him. He's not, I guess he's not here anymore. He must've been trying to mess with people. I don't know. 
But uh, Billy Blanks is pretty famous himself. I don't know if you guys are aware. Anyway, he was, he was on <laughs> I was just like, what's Dan White doing on this call? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I, um, hello, this is also serve as a bit of a uh, infrastructure committee update because it's basically the only thing we're working on. However, um, I, we haven't heard from Steve in a minute regarding lighting on the MLK project. So maybe later on um, we'll hear from him, but I am here to, um, I guess, sort of formally recommend, um, you know, on behalf of the infrastructure committee, um, MJ and Josh Lawyer um, for our Monroe Street underpass. Uh, Bob, Steve, and I met, unfortunately, Melissa um, couldn't make it, but we, you know, after some deliberation, all, all four artists were, were incredible. Um, and I do want to say that I ha have held on to their contact information as well as several other artists who were sort of shortlisted. I want to reach out to all these people again. Um, and I'm happy to discuss with um, anyone sort of offline. I don't think it's worth doing here as to some of the reasons maybe some other people weren't chosen. Um, however, I think, you know, this is a project that, um, as everybody knows, I'm really trying to put our flag in as the Arts Commission to really um, allow artists to have their unique specific voices to allow them um, to, you know, like really make the work they want to see. Um, which only then speaks to our ambition as a city and a city of the arts to support artists, not what we're trying to dictate and make them fit into our whatever spe specific vision mm -hmm. with, in reason. Well said. Um, well, which was the one that was selected? So they're, they're actually, they are here, they're, they are gonna show us. Um, so we, we chose specifically their um, giant under the bridge concept um, which they have um, fleshed out into, you know, to show us both sides of, of the work um, after a little bit of conversation with them. And um, yeah, um, I guess I'm just gonna kick it over to them just so they can show us what they're doing. And um, it's my understanding that we're all basically here to um, approve them moving forward. I do wanna say that in a process like this, there's, there's always going to be some room for revisions. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, I, we know that MJ and Josh have talent. We know that they can show up and do the job, um, but maybe there's some tweaks here and there. We're not here to discuss that today. Um, I think it's something that could come up later um, that we can maybe make some revisions here and there as needed. But um, yeah, so for all intents and purposes, um, this is the place where we're gonna say, okay, these are the artists we're moving forward with. Um, I'll tell the other three artists to get lost. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna kick it over to them just so they can show us their work. Um, they, you know, everybody is familiar with them because they were here last for me, except for Steve. Um, so we know about them specifically, but I'll let them talk a little bit more about the, the whole, you know, both sides and show us their proposal really for what they wanna do. So take Brian, it away. Um, could, are you gonna share with us like what were the reasons for making that selection or no? Um, why we chose MJ and Josh? Yeah. What, what was, yeah, what was the kind of winning? Um... Um, really, I think really they had um, a specific, unique artistic voice and, and really it was their storytelling. Um, I think it's, it's something that is gonna, you know, really, it's just really, it's really dynamic. I think it's, I mean, all the art was dynamic, of course, for different reasons. But this one, we really appreciated the fact that they, um, they have this sort of illustrative storytelling narrative throughout all of their work. Um, and it just gives us, it just puts some meat on the bone. Um, the other projects were of course incredible in their own right. Um, and in fact, you know, in a lot of ways, I think uh, an underpass this small was like almost wasted on Ernesto specifically. Um, and we just, we just, again, we just felt like they had a, the strongest artistic voice out of the four. Um, they really had um, something to communicate and that's what we really appreciate. Thank you. Of course. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. We're really excited to be here. And thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to continue to show like what we're excited to bring to Norwalk and Connecticut. Um, if it's OK, I'd like to share the screen at this point. Um, So, oops. 
So um, this is kind of. Window. Can you guys see what I'm I'm no, sharing? We're just looking at your Zoom your Zoom web page. Oh. <clears throat> Let me get out of here. Let me pull up my thing real quick. One more second, apologies. Okay, All right. can you guys see or what are you still not sharing? No, you're not sharing at all. <laughs> Sorry, hold on one more second. Here we go. Can you guys see this? Yes, this is leaving the net. Okay, great, great. So this is like the, the idea behind, um, again, it's the concept is uh, this, you know, these adolescent essentially giants and um, them kind of moving on from home. So this was the initial proposal of the giant lady kind of laying down, really taking up the space. We're really uh, inspired by, with mural work, I really think that taking advantage of the space is so important because you're in a public setting and there's nothing quite as powerful as a wall feeling larger than life. So um, we try to continue that narrative with the other wall. Um, and this was um, essentially a male figure. He's still kind of a giant in a sense. And um, he's in flight, kind of flying away from home. Um, yeah. There's also like, if, I don't know if you guys can see from what I'm looking at, but there's like a little home and this is supposed to kind of represent where she's in. Uh, on the other side of the forest. Um, this is the two walls kind of next to each other. Um, this is a, an extension of uh, this. I forget, I can't remember if it's the south or north side. Um, we looked it up online, but essentially his, the male figure side will be an extension of this larger triangular part. And it's supposed to be, this is supposed to be a parental figure. Um, and this was that extension of the other side uh, where the female figure is. Um, again, playing with scale, I had an idea. This is still a little bit rough, but the idea of a giant hand and kind of like an airplane flying around it, um, playing with scale. And again, this would be on the female side. So that's where the lighthouse had been originally? Yes, yeah. So, uh, you didn't have uh, enough time to shoot or book a model to shoot for that specific reference, mm -hmm. the hand reference. So uh, we would have to figure out uh, a model that would work for that and then out so that uh, we could kind of play around with that idea. Mm -hmm. It's a but little yeah, hard to hear you, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Josh, it's a little tough to hear you. <laughs> it was just kind of saying that for this last part with the hand, um, this is something that I found a reference of. I, we haven't shot for it. Like for uh, the male figure, we shot for this and what shot for the wall specifically. We shot our reference and took the photo and used it for um, the mural. But this hand part is still in development simply because we have it shot our own reference for it. So whenever we shoot reference, it just always looks a little bit stronger and made for that portion of the wall. Um, so that's probably why there's a little bit of a disconnect with that and versus um, these two walls, which probably feel a little bit more complete. Can I just ask with the that that hand idea, which I like because uh, I love the scale, um, would there be a background to that to tie it in with the others? We can, um, we can definitely add a background. Uh, we, one of the things we do like is kind of like this bare concrete wall. Like I just like it as a backdrop, but we can definitely tie it back into the other side of that field makes it a little bit more cohesive. Yeah, I'm, I was just asking. I'm not, True. I'm not, certainly not speaking for everybody else. Yeah. 
but yeah, that's kind of, that's what we came up with. It was just an extension of, again, like this folklore of a giant, giant uh, male at this sense, but with um, just kind of like in flight and flying away from home. Yeah, I think one of the big challenges with this wall specifically is just how long it is and, uh, compared to its height. So we wanted to figure out ways to elongate the characters while still making them feel massive. Much like Andrew and Eric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's any questions. Who's, uh, does anyone have any specific questions or, or, or feedback about this? Yeah. No, I, uh, I I like the idea of uh, the, uh, another figure on the other side. Uh, I like this better now than your original design uh, because it seems to be more cohesive. And if, if you think about the layout of this too, um, you know, the, the male figure is basically on the opposite side of the street if you're coming toward the train station. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll meet this figure um, as if, you know, again, as if you're sort of going toward the Sono and the police station and, the, and then the female figure is, is the opposite. You're coming away from Sono, away from the train station, away from the police station, you'll be met with this figure. Um, so I think the placement of this is actually really good and strategic just based on the general point flow of traffic and things like that. Mm. Yeah, 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 we assume right. that, sorry. Uh, yeah, the reason we wanted to place them kind of in those areas because it seemed like as far as the bridge, a lot of times the under bridges are kind of dark, even like for murals in general. So like the end points are usually the highlights and what catches people's eyes in general. So so kind of trying to make sure that we utilize those areas for the two figures and the murals is was kind of a big part of why we placed those there. Yeah, and understand that they were kind of on opposing sides because those triangle angles were uh, on it on different ends that you would potentially catch eyes on the way and on the way out. Mm. <clears throat> well, I I just speaking for myself, I really like um, your approach, and I like how you are. You know, like I said, uh, we, on our previous uh, part of the uh, the meeting, uh, for me, it's as much about the artist as it is the painting. And the design, you know, and having artists such as yourself coming and your willingness to work with us and, you know, giving us a story, not just uh, a design. I think that's important. I like it. Yeah, I love it. And I'm, um, I love that you guys are from the Bay Area because I'm also from the Bay Area. So, oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, connection there for me. <laughs> Thank you know, I think, you. I think Mark you know, touched on some things I already said too, about just, it, you know, it is, it is something that draws you in. And I think, um, you know, public art really should, you guys touched on this before, really should start conversations. It should get people interested. Um, sure, lots of people are gonna pass it. They're not gonna dig a lot deeper, but some people are like, why is this what this is? Um, and, you know, I think about myself as a, as a younger person, you know, an angsty graffiti writing teenager to stumble upon things like this, it makes you, it gets you excited and it gets you interested um so so i think and i think that's again one of the big reasons that the ic was was really drawn through work initially and then ultimately through this proposal too and i think you know that's yeah, where we are so yeah i think this is going to be a, a great addition to that area and it's just it's really intriguing i just love the the faces and the the body language and everything is just fascinating it really you want to know more right <laughs> You just want to understand what's what's going to be next. What's going to happen in the next ten minutes for these folks? It's great. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That that's we do. We really are trying to tell a story, so we appreciate people at least finding it interesting. And you know, you know, like Stephen said, like trying to at least have a feeling of like what's coming next. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's great. So did uh, are, is one of you painting the woman and one of you painting the man? <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet. I think that uh, generally we uh, we switch off 
Um, so we'll, we'll have to attack it as we get closer. Yeah, I think usually it becomes, we want to keep it cohesive. So usually we assign the figures to someone just so that the, if there's multiple figures, they kind of feel like similar rather than two different angles. Yeah. So, we're not sure yet what this one specifically is. Yeah, I just thought, I just thought I couldn't help but not, I mean, notice that, you know, you have a, uh, you know, a couple presenting a painting of two figures, uh, one a man and one a woman. I thought that was really interesting yeah. whether that was on purpose or not. Mm -hmm. So I think the only other outline question that is specific to this project is if there are any updates to your, to your budget needs. Um, has that, has that changed at all? Does it remain the same? What, what um, I, it, it's remained the same. Um, one thing that uh, we did add was, oh, never mind. No, yeah, we did. We already included these walls. So yeah, we it's remained the same for all four components. Yeah. Anyone else? So, so the only thing I wanted to, to say about, we, I had asked about the background with the hand. I noticed that the um, the part that wraps around on the south side, uh, that's the south side, sort of matches the painting that's on the adjacent side. Mm -hmm. And the painting on the other side has a very different background. And then the, uh, the third piece, potentially no background. So um, I just wanted to make sure that um, we're, we're mindful of that we kind of want I don't want to, I'm not saying, suggesting that backgrounds have to be all the same. I'm just saying that we want to make sure that these pieces kind of tie in together. You no, know, you're absolutely that. right. I think that it would probably be stronger to um, somehow attach that background to this. Yeah, that's that's my so, only concern, but not enough yeah. to where I would say, no, I don't like it. I, 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 love, I love the design in general. Thank you. Um, so, so Brian, uh, in terms of this process now, um, so we need to a vote to move uh, these artists on to that we are proving that this is our final ch choice now, right? Yeah. Um, and Mark, Mark, can I just speak to that yeah, a little please, bit? Please. Um, please. Yeah, so, so some there, developments have happened. <laughs> there's been some developments, but also um, like you couldn't remember from the last time we worked with Lauren for the other pieces, this does have to go to council um, because the mayor has to execute a contract to spend the money. Um, okay. how, however, because this one's a little more complicated because we don't own the property, the state DOT owns the property and MTA to some degree as well. Um, we need to get approval from them uh, we were just informed that they are currently in the midst of developing an art process for this. Um, in the past, there was a process, but essentially it was just an encroachment permit, which gives anybody the right to touch and do whatever they want to state property if they approve that. Now they're making it a little bit more complicated with a formal application process. The reason being that... Um, they weren't really overseeing the installation of anything, the design of anything, if it was really going to affect structural integrity or not, those types of things. They had no formal process of going through that. My guess is that somebody at the state level who used to do this has moved on. <laughs> and as a result, um, other people at the state have taken the responsibility of reviewing these. And as a result of that, they're coming up with a formal process. So this is gonna take a little bit longer than we had hoped um, just on their end. And our council will not be able to approve anything without that approval from the state first. Mm -hmm. Classic catch 22. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so I've uh, been on them and, and Brian's <clears throat> been on the emails as well. I'm kind of pushing them and saying, here's what New York does. And here's kind of you know, what we could copy from an application standpoint, but if you think um, a city moves slow, the state <laughs> moves even slower a lot of the times. Um, but we'll keep everybody looped in on this. So what would happen tonight is that we would approve um, this piece and the expenditures, and then we won't have to come back to the commission 
for the contract signing, which we, we wouldn't have done in a normal process anyways, but they wouldn't actually be able to begin work until we had the approval from the state and the signed contract with the mayor, which would include going to the state, getting that approval and their application all finished, which I would assist with, Brian would assist with, and the artists would as well, merely from kind of a design perspective. Um, and then after we have that kind of sign off from them, I would take um, the proposal to sign off from them, probably a memo that describes what we've done thus far and how we chose them, all that fun stuff. Then that would go to a council committee. Once the council committee approves it, it'll go on a council agenda. And that's when the council would approve it. And then we would have a signed contract literally the day after that meeting. <laughs> and it sounds like a ton, but those approvals from the committee and the council are only going to take um, two weeks once it's on a council agenda and goes to the council the following week if it's approved on both that'll be done in a two week process the real waiting time is going to be that state piece so I just wanted to give well, everybody an update just so I'm clear um, once we vote to recommend this piece essentially which is basically all we can really do um, is it going to go to the state for approval before the common council hears it or is it the other way around Yes, it would go to the state before the council because the council will need to see that the state approved the permits for us to do the work. And as a reminder to everyone, I mean, this, you know, this is our first DOT mural. Um, unfortunately, uh, MJ and Josh are a little bit of guinea pigs here, but the hope is um, that once we go through this, we know exactly what's involved. We understand more of how long these things take so we can start to do things like the Van Buren underpass and these other places that we've, we've isolated as, as good potential spaces in our city. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little, it's frustrating news, but but at least we have someone on the line who's answering questions, so. There's that, and, and to add to it, um, there's other municipalities that I know of that are submitting as well and hoping to get an application in hand, so we're not the only municipality pushing for this. Bridgeport has eight murals they're pushing for right now for highway underpasses, so it's not just us. Um, so hopefully that puts a little bit more pressure on them as well to kind of speed up the process for us, because the hope is, you know, by the time early spring hits and the weather is cooperating, we can get, you know, everything installed and good by that time. Hmm. So you mentioned the CTDOT and you mentioned a couple of other entities. Are they, do they coordinate that on their side? Like we don't yep. have to go to the different places, right? Yep, it's going to be from from what it seems like it's going to be like one sole application and that application will incorporate the encroachment permit and the encroachment permit and application would get simultaneously approved and once we have that in hand is when our local process will start. Well, I think it's, I think it's I had to say even though it's like it's frustrating in a way how long things can take. I think the fact that this is happening and it's happening on a statewide level. I think it's a really good sign. The fact that they feel that they need on a Hartford level to define this process shows me that there are a lot of people interested in public art. And that that's a good news, I think. And the timeline isn't gonna affect you because you weren't gonna start the murals until spring anyway. Yeah, correct? exactly. We, we, we fully expected you know this the state stuff to take a take a while regardless of what they threw at us so um you know basically you know we, we found the artist is just a matter of get, going through these steps and then we can hopefully hopefully yeah. make some magic happen late spring early summer next year but what's really great is that we did this already so that when we do do the encroachment permit application process we have an artist on board we have you know a design that's fully fleshed and that way there's no surprises on their end, which they don't like. <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll cruise through that process because we've done all of this already. Yeah. All right. Great, great work, everyone. Um, so Can I ask one question, Mark? Go, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, I don't want this in any way to slow things down, but I'm just wondering if lighting should be a part of the application to the state. It definitely should. Anything that's going to be... Um, affixed to the wall or near the wall um, on either side or the outside abutments. If we were to put um, lighting installed on the physical wall itself, that would definitely be something that would have to be 
in the application, especially because for a mural, we're not really screwing anything in or putting any brackets on anything. But if we're doing lighting, we would do that um, and need to have electrical nearby. Um, so that's definitely something that we're going to have to include, especially like a um, if it's not solar powered, kind of who's going to be paying for electricity. Um, where is that going to be installed if it is solar powered if there's going to be a panel somewhere where is that going is it on their property or our property. So we have a few months to flesh that all out but everything that's going to touch that wall. <laughs> we're going to need to include it in there. Okay. Yeah, that's a good great point Stephen. Mm. Yep. I think thanks. Okay. Um, so as far as uh, make your recommendation on this project and with these artists and this this design. Um, do we have a motion? A motion to approve. All right. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second the motion. Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, we're going to take a roll call vote. I'm going to start with myself. Double thumbs up for me, Mark Allen. And I'm turning it over to Brian Casper. Brian Casper, wholeheartedly yes. Great job, Brian. And uh, Elizabeth Tardif? Um, yes, um, all for it, yep. Uh, Ava Jacobs? Yes, aye. Uh, Stephen Rust? Aye. Uh, Nori Gruden? Aye. And Melissa Matuska? Aye. All right, the ayes carry. Good job, Brian. Hell yeah. Did a great I'm job. The whole committee has done a really good job in this and I, I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> All right, so MJ excited. and Josh, I will, I'll follow you up with you with some, with some next steps and um, Sabrina, I'll check in with you offline and, and we'll, we'll figure out what those next steps are. Yeah, I'm gonna um, really be a pester and be like the girl who calls and emails every week to see what an update is. So hopefully <laughs> um, they'll answer us quickly. Awesome. Thank all you right. all. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. 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 Um, um, so the next item on the agenda, um, Heidi Alterman had approached me on this. I'll do a little um, background because it's very, it's a very fresh idea. So she wants to do a Norwalk Public Schools oriented art project mm -hmm. um, where every single school is able to contribute to an art piece that either gets displayed in City Hall or somewhere in the city. Um, Jessica had approached her to see if the students would potentially be interested in collaborating with the MLK Corridor Group on the fence project. Um, so there's been a few ideas that have been rattled around for the fence project that's along Ely Avenue. A portion of that is installing um, kind of like wood planks or a cover over them so that the students would then be able to take the planks, put art on the planks, and then the planks would be installed over the fence. Um, again, still being fleshed out and we're still gonna run into the issue <laughs> that the fence is owned by DOT and not owned by us. <laughs> um, so it's very new and very kind of in the very bare bones of an idea being formed, but the idea of the fence project is probably going to live within the MLK corridor with an arts commissions uh, partnership. So the MLK corridor board and the board of ed would do the organizing and all that fun stuff with Heidi kind of as a lead arbiter of that process. And then we would come in for kind of review and approval as we would for anything else. Um, my presumption is that they're going to come to us throughout the process anyways to ask for input on how best we think to do this, um, what materials to use, that type of thing. So I just wanted to preface that conversation and then um, it'll come back to us at some point in time when we have more of an idea fleshed out. But she did want it on the agenda um, and for us to have just to be aware of it and start to talk about it. Um, so I am in her stead doing that since she couldn't make it today. Are we kind of firm on the corridor and the fencing for the project and not like traffic graphic boxes? So there's a mural. There's a lot of proposals. There's a lot of proposals up in the air right now. So we're not really tied to anything as of right now. 
But if you guys have ideas that you're willing to share, um, we can compile them and then see what the best bet is for a student project, just because the traffic graphics would be great, but that also requires permission slips, having the kids outside of school, unless they're bringing the boxes in. Um, that's why the, the wood plank idea came up because it was like, we could put the wood planks in the art classroom and they can just do it and we could take them and install them. Um, so sure. that was kind of why she wanted to bring it up though, is to have these conversations and to get kind of a list produced of what we could possibly do that's more logistical for the entire school system to kind of be able to opt in or opt out of. Um, and this hasn't even been broached with the Board of Ed yet. So we don't really know <laughs> what the end result's gonna be, but if anybody has some interesting ideas um, along this front, I'm happy to collect them and kind of see where we can go with them. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I love the idea of a collaboration uh, I, I guess Board of Ed would have to be involved with that. Um, Definitely. Would the, would the funding for this come from Board of Ed, Arts Commission, uh, um, a corridor, like or all three? If, if it's for the corridor, they have specific funding for the fencing, if that's the project that ends up happening. Um, if it is a collaboration for, you know, inside of City Hall or something like that, Heidi was willing to do fundraising around the project. Mm -hmm. Um, so at this point, I do not see any Arts Commission specific funding going towards it at all, unless it's, you know, volunteer time for you guys, essentially. Got it. Um, all right. Um, so do we want to just, you know, uh, table this for uh, consideration and have a, the members reflect on it and see if anybody has any ideas they want to uh, submit over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, pretty much this wasn't for approval. It was just kind of for a conversation. If anybody wants to submit any ideas, just let me know. Yeah, that sounds really good. I love yeah. the I love the plank idea because the fact that, you know, we, we know it is hard to get kids out of school and get them involved in a public art project, but the fact that it can be done in school and then installed, I think is a great, great idea. And can't she yeah. use the people's gallery to like put stuff up there as well? Yeah, if we were able to, if that was the end result is that it was just going in city hall, that's definitely something we can do and super easy. We can hang stuff quite easily. Um, also, I was gonna mention this in the budget committee update, but I ordered the hanging systems we used before. I ordered um, 13 sets. So we can hang 13 new pieces and I only spent a hundred bucks. So oh. um, I figured I'd pull the trigger on the prime day deal <laughs> for the hanging <laughs> systems while they were cheap. Um, so I have them in my office and whenever we want to, you know, curate some additional stuff for the hallways and city hall to hang, we have the ability to do that and building management already approved the hanging system. So we're all good on that front as well. Yeah. Cause even if you do the planks, maybe they can, she can photo, you know take pictures of everything and put them in the people's gallery to show the progress so people can go in there and see it who don't you know normally go down to that area mm. definitely yep so, sabrina we just we touched on this in the budget meeting um but in terms of the people's gallery now that the um uh the space has been potentially doubled because of they moved that trophy case out is it possible that we could get how would we get approval from facilities so that that is officially part of the people's gallery? To... So from my understanding, um, we would just extend down the hallway and just they would get a, they would do an internal approval to just extend it down and do the installation. They've put trophy cases in there without any approval just through their office. So it's the same process for us. Yeah, so everybody, just so everybody understands where the People's Gallery is now is where the uh, the mural, uh, you know, uh, display had been that Judith Bacall had done. And that basically now you have the second half of the hallway, which is basically room for a whole other display presentation. So one of the things we talked about was potentially, you know, doing an installation in the other half of the People's Gallery now now that we can effectively make it bigger and then potentially then overlap presentations. So 
Um, we don't have to just uh, move because Judith Bacall's, I mean, is it's really great. If you guys haven't seen it, definitely should stop by City Hall and take a look at what she, the work she did. This is pre pandemic and really hasn't been seen that much. Um, so it would be great for people to see it. And that would be great. So we can do a people's gallery in the second half of it. And that'll just, you know, we do an event, bring people in, that'll get people seeing the, the work that had been done before. Yeah, so I went to, before I ordered, I went and counted kind of what we could do. Um, there's the, as I'm sure you guys have been in City Hall know, there's like the large pillars that are down the hallway that kind of break it up. Yeah. Um, so the large pillars have the space in between, which is where we were hanging stuff for the People's Gallery. There's currently four open of those large spaces in between the pillars. The rest of the other two now have doorways there, so we can't cover them. And two of the four that are available have benches, but we can um, get approval to move those elsewhere as well. Um, so yeah, I, I went out there and did some inventory, but we have some ability to do that. There's also other blank walls up on the second floor as well um, that don't have benches or doors that we could potentially use. So um, as we grow, we grow <laughs> pretty much, but we have the uh, equipment to do so, so. That's awesome. Um, so in the interest of time, we're gonna, let's, let's move forward uh, to the committee updates. Um, Nori, let's kick it back to you uh, for the uh, for the bu budget update, having met with the uh, budget committee recently. Well, we basically went over the fact that how much money that we have, what was allocated for, and to try to spend it and jump in any time, Sabrina, so we can always get this funding. Like the hanging system is ordered, done with, but all these expenditures are pretty much set in stone except and we also have uh the grant for the mlk area of the improvements so going forward we're just uh, you know there's a little stuff we can work with we're trying to do and it, mark's going to bring it up in infrastructure with artist speaks is going to be that's a uh, communication a uh, communications something where we're going to use some of the money that isn't allocated as of yet to that project because we have, I forget what, what it fell under. I think it originally fell under just like business expenses. Yeah. Um, but we have currently um, the 1300 in business expenses. We have the 1500 in other operating supplies that we um, can use. And we also have the 1500 in advertising and the 1500 in printing and duplicating. So in previous years, the printing and duplicating budget was used for things like the mayor's gallery to print and post kind of all of the things that we need for that. We can also use that for, you know, flyers, t-shirts, um, swag, if we wanted to print some other additions to the people's gallery, those types of things, that's what we can use the 1500 for. Mm -hmm. Secretarial services is Telesco, so we won't touch it. Um, the membership dues is our cultural alliance um, yearly fee, so that we won't touch. Fifteen hundred for advertising, we can use it again. Flyers, paid advertising on social media, those types of things. Professional services is Michelle, so we won't touch that. And like I said, the business services and the other operating supplies we can use for kind of a flex of a bunch of things. That um, other contractual services item for five hundred dollars is what we give the poet laureate. Um, so that would account for all of our budget. So essentially we have, you know, 33,500 bucks to really play with. Now would that, any of that money be you, like what Brian did to find the artist, was that in the other money? The MLK? So for the cafe subscription, yes. that was under business expenses for us, but the actual payments to the artists for their submissions was out of the capital budget. So that's okay. Separate. So if he, if we needed to do that again, you know, for something else, we would just use it out of that that expenditure. Yep. So we have ninety five hundred left in the MLK Boulevard stuff. So some of that money is going to go towards the lighting. Um, we should have a little bit more left over, but since the um, Monroe Street Bridge is in that geography, we can use that for that. Um, using the oldest money first is probably the best 
way to go about this. And then we have, you'll see the 2000 bucks out of the first art in public places program that was for those submissions. And then the $50,000 is this year's new money. So we have a total of um, almost 80,000 bucks here. Excuse me, Sabrina. Uh, there uh, it's news on the lighting for the MLK uh, pumping station. Uh, Ralph Kolb of the Water Pollution Control Agency, I guess, uh, city of Norwalk, uh, agreed to pay for that. And okay. it's, as far as I know, that's been taken care of. Uh, and the lighting, in fact, has been installed. Oh, OK. Uh, I haven't been out there at, at night to go take a look, so I'll have yeah, to do it. Know. Yeah, please take a look. I, I have a photo I can show. My wife just shot this evening. I just, I'm in DC right now, so I don't know. <laughs> but we can talk about this in old business, but I can share the photo. I can't, I couldn't tell it was too, still too light. But yeah, no problem. Please drive well, by. If, if that's done and they paid for it, we'll have, you know, this money to play around with. But like I said, when the first invoice comes in for MJ um, and Josh, we can use that 9,500 and then just keep ticking away at the art and public places money because that can be used anywhere. So we're not really tied to a specific geography. Um, not that it won't be used in MLK because it will be, um, but we can do some other things with the rest of the funding. That's awesome. Good, great job, Stephen. I mean, that's, Thanks, that's Mark. exciting news. Though. Yeah, it's good. Glad to see it finally get done. Don't feel like you need to hold back on this news. <laughs> I'm not. I'm waiting for old business. I'm following you know, the rules here. <laughs> Fair enough. So that is it for the budget update. Um, we are starting the, or, the um, operating funding budgeting right now. So the plan is to request the same amount that we requested last year. Yeah. Um, Which means we need to spend what we have now. Correct. So if by the time they actually review it, which is normally in March, if mm -hmm. we haven't spent all of it down or a good amount of it, they're going to reduce it. Yeah, we don't. Want um, so that's just kind of where we're headed. Normally, they don't touch it because ours is pretty small in comparison. Um, but if we're not spending it, it's not, you know, ethical to keep requesting more if we're not going to spend it, you know. Yeah, perhaps it's worth perhaps it's worth um, dreaming up something else. That's a little smaller. That's not on state property. Um, that we can get the ball rolling on too. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know. Just that's not an idea. So for the for the capital process, it's a little bit um, different. So essentially, that money continues to roll over. So what happens? This is way too much information, but we bond for the capital money, and we don't bond everything all at once. So we give quarterly reports of when we're going to spend that money so that the city bonds um, and takes the money actually out of the bond when we're going to use it. So that money doesn't go away. It just, we don't bond for it until we need it. So it's not really as time sensitive as the ordinance piece. Now, I just because I'm trying to remember the meeting, the budget meeting, um, inventory, inventorying of the artwork that we have that's going to be but you're going to try to get an s um ask for that money for next year yep so i would ask for that money in the capital process which doesn't start until a little bit later thank you yep all right i think that's it for me um on the budget stuff if you want to so I'm going to I'm going to bring it over to uh, communications, which is um, something I'd like to speak about. So um, the original idea for the Art Speaks event had come about th from communications back when uh, Peter Smith and um, was running it and uh, one of our older uh, members. And um, I wasn't involved with it initially, um, but uh, having moved over to communi communications and getting Brian into infrastructure, um, I, I started taking a look at this Art Speaks event. I wanted to resuscitate the idea and it really started to uh, take on new meaning for me, uh, thinking of it you know, in regard to communications because I think this is a real opportunity for the Arts Commission, um, not, not just to speak about what we do, to speak about art but you know realizing that the cultural impact of the arts and art and arts um 
and how it involves other aspects of society in our city. I think this is a real opportunity for us to sort of uh, take a, a topical approach to looking at the intersection of art and arts with other things, such as the impact of arts on education or the, the cross section of arts and mental health, um, arts and equity, arts and social justice, et cetera. And I started thinking that this would be a great opportunity to have these panel discussions where we invite people say from education and arts to have this cross plat, uh, cross dialogue as it were about these topics and to talk about how these things are uh, relate to each other in terms of the city of Norwalk especially and um, I started thinking and you know, we originally talked about doing art speaks as um, once a year. And I don't think that's enough because to me, um, you know, it, I think the idea of having this conversation, uh, there are so many things that we could talk about. I think just doing, picking one topic and doing it once a year, I, I, th I think is, is not enough. Oh, I recently just did a, um, one of my school open houses that I did here at my studio. Um, we did a panel discussion on songwriting, for instance, and it was a panel discussion for songwriters to learn about how to build a songwriting career. And I realized, and it was really, really effective. And it went on for about 30 minutes. And then uh, when, and reflecting on it later, uh, somebody said, you know what, that would have been a great thing to attend if it was like 20 minutes long. And, or, you know, it, it just seemed like you don't want it to go too long. In other words, you know, you invite people, but the panel discussion needs to be really focused. And I think it probably, whether it's 20, 25 minutes or something like that, I think it should be the, the limit. And I was thinking we could build this as like a nighttime or afternoon event. And maybe the event is a, a you know two hours long. And then within that two hour window, we could have three different panel discussions and so that way we're hitting three topics and then each one is not too long and we're able to really focus the conversation and keep them exciting and then um, if we can do this i think twice a year i think then we're going to hit a more a wider variety of topics and and the whole idea of this is that we're creating these conversations that's the best way to put it and and we're and we're really quite honestly, just to be frank, we're putting the Arts Commission in the middle of these conversations. We are the hosts, we are, we are the reason that we're bringing together all these factors, factions of people to talk about the art and the arts and the cultural impact of it. I think this is a real opportunity for the Arts Commission. And I think it's a really good, I think it could be a really good thing for people to, to attend. Um, so I wanna just, uh, I'm open to anybody else's ideas, but these, these are my ideas on it. And, uh, I think that we can, I'd be happy to host one of these events at, at my studio. I know that uh, Duvian said he would be interested in hosting one. Um, I believe that we don't have to spend any money on event uh, spaces. I think we could probably, but I think that spending money on advertising will be important and then spending money on printing for whether there's a, a brochure or a, an agenda or what when people come and you and you 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 give them things to take away with them i think is going to be important and um and the other thing is that we can when we have these events we can also have whether it's healthcare or arts or education you know people can be there i think it's going to be important to have a little bit of a networking time for each event as well for people to talk i think who knows what opportunities can come out of this but that's my idea for art speaks i think it's a great chance for the Arts Commission to speak for itself and and the impact of art. I love this, Mark. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of things, um, Mark. I, I've done, on uh, I manage a gallery at the Fairfield Library, and I've done a lot of talks just on things like helping artists do business planning. Everything I do is related to the visual arts, so helping artists do vis um, business planning and um, the importance of art in our society. 
Um, so I'd be happy to help in any way. Um, but I, I want to also ask you, are you aware of the things that the Cultural Alliance does? And are we in any way connected with them and, and the things that they do? Because they do those kinds of things. They do those kinds of events and talks and- For you know. sure. Yeah. Um, I am aware we do like part of the, part of our dues is we pay uh, money to the Arts Cultural Alliance to be uh, members of that. And I'm also a personal member. Um, recently, um, they held a conference on um, on doing a, a study of the economics of arts, which is something that I had wanted to do for a, a Norwalk level. This is a national and they had a meeting, uh, a conference. I went, I think Sabrina went as well. And, uh, and it's really, really valuable. What they do is valuable. Um, and I think, and definitely encourage everybody to get involved with them. But you see what, that, what they're doing is, it puts the Fairfield Cultural Alliance front and center, even if though they're not pushing, you know, it, it puts uh, our Cultural Alliance is, is the ones hosting these types of meetings. I want the Arts Commission to do that as well. So. Well, yeah, that's yeah, compete. exactly. That's a compete. We want to work with them. And I think that David Green, for instance, could become a panelist on our thing to talk about how, you know, arts impacts his arts and culture. I think that's what we're talking about, right? As, um, right. As Sabrina and I, have we've talked many times about um, arts and culture. You know, the, we've even talked about the idea that maybe one day we will be the Arts and Cultural uh, Commission. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my concern was just that, you know, that we would be duplicating what they're already doing. It seems like they're just, we have a lot of that in Fairfield County, a lot of people doing similar things simultaneously. And then, and then what happens is the, you know, the audience, you know, I mean, it, it just, we don't want to be redundant. So that's the only, I would, I would say court, somehow we need to know what else, what other people are doing and then sort of do something really I don't know how David Green does it. I don't know if he does specific for towns or if it's just topic related. I think it's mostly topics. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, they have their initiatives, like arts and economics, yeah. which is like one thing that they're they're really pushing. Um, what is I it? It's good. I think it's good. But see, the thing is, is that their their focus is Fairfield County. It's Fairfield I, County. My right. focus is Norwalk. Right. So that's the thing is that right. for me, it's not a, just a matter of services for artists and and right. the culture, it's about promoting Norwalk and how it intersects, how art and arts intersects with other aspects of society here in our city. And that- Here in our city, right. With a, yeah, and with businesses, I think, you know, things that we could do that would be helpful to the local businesses, you know? For engaging. sure. And, and basically, I would, is, you can open this up to, I, I want to get everybody's ideas on the yeah. type of topics that we can talk about. I'm, I've only put out three of them. I wasn't saying that that's the goal here. No. I think that one of the things that we need to think about though is the target market for the cultural alliance is oftentimes more the professional, those that are in the, like the different types of professional organizations and they're looking of how to further their professional career in that sense whereas we're looking locally and we'd find more of your local artisan art, you know local artists more local networking so I think you've got two very different target markets but they do accent each other. But I feel like what Mark's talking about would be an added benefit for our, our community. Yeah. Yeah, I think any kind of art conversations that um, we have that, in, you know, sort of inform people of the importance of art and what it adds to the communities, to education, to uh, your mental health, all of it. I think those things are really good. And yeah, I, I think our- The other our, thing is that we, we really have to not forget that, you know, we're not only the art commissioner, we're also the arts commission and we have such diversity in the arts in Norwalk. Right. From visual to performing arts, uh, dance. We have a brand new performing arts college that's moving to, to the area. Um, oh. There's so much diversity from poetry to, I, I think that, I think there's a lot of room for us to, to, to get into some things that, that some of the bigger organizations don't necessarily get. get right, right. 
Well, that's that that's my general uh, pitch on that. Um, you know, I, I think that the communications committee, such as it is, I brought Ava into this. I asked her specifically um, because she and I had worked together on the Norwalk Film Festival, and uh, she and I are working on she and I are both working on that the Mayor's Gallery exhibit, which is going painfully slow, but we're we promised each other to get busy on that. Um, but uh, Elizabeth, I, you were going to work with us on communication, right? Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to. I. Um... So I, we, you know, we don't have a, a ton of other commissioners who aren't working on infrastructure, but um, uh, Heidi, uh, I haven't really had a chance to connect with Heidi. Uh, perhaps she will be interested in this. Um, but if anybody else offline is interested in uh, submitting ideas for this, discussing it, by all means, contact me and let's talk. You don't have to be a part of the communications committee to send me your ideas. Um, and with that said, I'm going to kick it back to uh, to Brian. Anything else on infrastructure before we uh, wrap uh, this? Up? No, no. I mean, uh, you know, obviously this the Monroe stuff has been front and center. Um, Steve already shared the news about the lighting on MLK. So really, those are the two the two big things we're working on right now. And one of them is uh, sounds like signed, sealed, and delivered. So, um, yeah. Great. Uh, Sabrina, was there any, any other old business that we needed to talk about? There is some old business, more of an update from me. Um, so the two, the Attitude Cross sculpture, that dancing girl, that large sculpture that we approved a couple months back, yep. um, and the Dragon Bolt sculpture, both of them went to the Parks and Rec Committee of the Common Council. The Dragon Boat got approved with flying colors. Nobody said anything. Um, the location, as I think you guys can remember, it was proposed to be calf pasture. Then it, the parks department proposed it to go in Cranberry Park. And now wait, we are- Wait, you said the dragon boat. You're talking about the dancer? Yeah, the dragon boat's all set. They're okay. fine. It's okay, going great. to council and it's going to be all good because mainly moving from one city hall facility to another. <laughs> um, but the dancing girl is kind of a larger animal. Uh, previous park leadership, said that they wanted it in Cranberry Park. Now they don't want it there. Um, and they want a more formalized process for um, art in parks, which will be involved in, in some regard coming forward, which is kind of what we've talked about in the past. We'd like to see parks have more of a theme rather than just random pieces being placed and plopped everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, However, in the meantime, since we've accepted the donation of the Dancing Girl, um, they propose that we place it in the art park across from the vines. That's a good idea. Yeah, just until we can leave it, either we can leave it there for the three years of display if we love it there, but if they curate um, their parks and have a theme where it would be better placed in another park, we could potentially do that as well. But as of right now, that's kind of um, where we're at. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Sabrina, when you know when when the whole streetscape thing project, which is going to be granted beyond the three years uh, in Wall Street, um, gets underway, they're supposed to have wider sidewalks and and more, you know, potentially space for something like this. The fact that we are have this performing arts college moving to this area, that might be a really good tie in, you know, for like a, some sort of placement. For sure. And I think that's kind of like where the parks department is heading. Like there's hopefully down the line from now, once a policy is in place, there's a right place for certain types of art and certain mm -hmm. themes of art in the city. Um, so we're just kind of be, going to be placing it in the art park as a holder until yeah. we settle all that out. Yeah, I think uh, I think getting art into that art park, I think is a really good idea. Um, there is, there's yeah, four, has a, It has a name. <laughs> yeah, it's the art park and there's four, um, there's four concrete slabs already there. So one of them will be taken by the dancing girl, but there's three other slabs there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I'd like to talk more about. Sounds good. So that was it for me. I just wanted to leave you guys in on that because that'll be going to council uh, next week on Tuesday. All right. Excellent. 
So very good meeting. Uh, I think it was very productive and I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, anybody else have anything uh, before we move to adjourn? Oh, next Monday, they're having a meeting at the Norwalk uh, Public Library for about the Wall Street design. Mm. Stuff no, like that's, that. uh, that's on the 14th. Yeah. Yeah, 5 p.m. 5 to 5 to next. Wait, next. I was wrong. It's not yeah, next. Two Mondays. Month, two Mondays. It's two Mondays. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't yeah know. If anybody is interested in attend, yeah. I'll go. I'm going. So. <laughs> yeah. I will also be there. Okay. Same. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm going to move a, a motion for adjournment. Anybody? I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> no, I can't call the motion. Somebody else has the motion. I'm Melissa, my uh, I know like Melissa. It. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Sorry, Good. Elizabeth. That's okay. No problem. I'm going to vote to adjourn. Um, Brian Casper. Aye. Let's let's get out of here. Elizabeth. Aye. Ava Jacobs. Aye. Stephen Rust. Aye. Nora Gruden. Aye. Melissa Matuska. Aye. Uh, okay, no abstains, no nays. Nobody's going to stay here on Zoom forever. So uh, I'll see you guys next. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up with you guys offline, but uh, I'll see you next month. And I hope Later. that we can meet in person one of these days. Have a good yes, night. Yes, let's do that. Sounds good. All right. Have a good night. Bye, everybody.